Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I have six questions about auxiliary verbs. What is an auxiliary verb? Why do we need them sometimes and other times we don't? Can we use them to emphasize things? How can we use them to show interest? Do we also use them to encourage the listener to respond? And the last one, how can they help us in order to avoid repetition? So in this lesson, we're going to answer to these questions about auxiliary verbs. So stay tuned. Right, so what is an auxiliary verb? An auxiliary verb is a verb used in forming tenses, moods, or even voices of other verbs. The primary auxiliary verbs are be, do, and have. They are modal auxiliaries, and these are can, could, might, might, must, shall, will, and would. If you want to watch some of these lessons, you can click here to, just to look at the modal verbs. Now, let's concentrate on the main three verbs that I have here, the main three auxiliary verbs. These are be, do, and have. So be, when do we use be? For these tenses, the present continuous and the past continuous. Remember that for the past continuous is was or were, okay? It changes. And when do we use this auxiliary? For positive, negative, and interrogative sentences. We also use be for passive. And we, you need to remember that we use the verb to be, the auxiliary verb to be, plus the past participle. Now, let's look at do. We use do for the present simple or the past simple. Remember that the third person singular is does. And for the past simple is did. And here we use the auxiliary do or does for interrogative and negative sentences only. Then we have have, and has is for the third person singular. We use it for the present perfect, present perfect continuous, and the past perfect, or the past perfect continuous. Remember that for the past we need had and not have. We use this auxiliary for positive sentences, negative sentences, and interrogative sentences. Remember also that we have a form, an informal form for possession, which is have got. So have got, or the third person singular has got. Now I'm going to erase this and we're going to look over the second question that I prepared for you. So our next question, why do we use them sometimes and other times we don't? Well, do or does, for example. We, I said that we use it for a negative sentence, an interrogative sentence, right? And this is just when we're asking for an object or when. For example, what do you eat for breakfast every day? What do you eat for breakfast every day? So you can see the usage of the auxiliary do in this case. Do you, right? Another example. When does she start university? When does she start university? And here we're asking for when. So does is the verb to do or the auxiliary verb to do in the third person does. Does she start university? What happens if I ask for a subject? Well, we do not we do not use do, does, or did. For example, who met you at the party? Who met you at the party? Can you see the auxiliary there? It would be did, the auxiliary. We don't need did in this question because we just don't, okay? We're asking for who. And the answer would be can met me at the party, because can here is the subject. You're asking for the subject. Who met you 
at the party. Ken met me at the party. Instead, if I said, if I asked for the object, I would have said, who did you meet at the party? Who did you meet at the party? I met Ken. Okay, so this would be um, the two examples for for the auxiliary verbs uh, that we don't or don't need. If I used other uh, auxiliaries, we do need them. For example, who is coming to the party? And here we're asking always for the subject of the, the, the sentence. Who is coming to the party? As you can see, we have the auxiliary to be. And so we do place it on the question. So, the answer would be, John is coming to the party. So, only for do, does or did, we do not place it in the question when you're asking for the subject. That's the, the answer to this question. Now, we go on with the third point, and can we use the auxiliary to emphasize things we certainly can, we certainly can, and we're using here can, the modal verb, and uh, uh, because I'm answering to that question, so we certainly can, and we emphasize it. Do, does, did. So I said that we need this auxiliary for negative and interrogative sentences. However, if you want to emphasize something, we use it in a positive sentence, just like my examples. She does study French with me. She does study French with me. Listen to the intonation. She does study French with me. And pay attention that study stays as the base of the verb without any S at the end. So, because there is the auxiliary does in this case. Or, if you wanted to say something in the past, they did meet me at the cinema. So, did right here is the auxiliary that we normally leave out, but because we want to stress that they met me at the cinema, we use the auxiliary did. So, they did meet me at the cinema. And pay attention to the intonation. You cannot say, they did meet me at the cinema. No, they did meet me at the cinema. They did meet me at the cinema. She does study French, and so on. I'm going to erase this, and we're going to look at the other three questions. So we're back. The next question. How can we use auxiliaries to show interest? Well, by using short questions and placing the same auxiliary of the original sentence, either positive or negative. Let's just take a look at the example to uh, make that part clear. So, he ended up at university, after all. This is what I say. And my friend says, did he? Good for him. So, I repeat, I say, he ended up at university, after all. And a friend of mine says, did he? Good for him. So as you can see, we have did because is the auxiliary of this sentence, the original sentence. So ended. Ended is the past of the verb to end and is in the past simple. And the auxiliary is did. So we repeat it, did and then the same uh, subject, in this case, did he? Good for him. Let's take a look at the second example. So, a friend says, they aren't coming over. And somebody else says, aren't they? Aren't they? Why not? So, you can see that this is the present continuous and the auxiliary for the present continuous is the verb to be. And so, in this case, we have a negative sentence and the other person would repeat 
the same auxiliary in the same form, so negative. They aren't coming over. The other person would say, aren't they? Why not? So that person is surprised that they aren't coming over. So I'm going to dedicate a lesson on this in, in, future, in the future. Let's take a look at the fifth question now. Do we also use auxiliaries to encourage the listener to respond? We certainly do. We certainly do. They are called question tags. And there is a lesson on question tags. And if you want to watch that lesson on that specific topic, you may click here. But I'm going just to review that for you, okay? So we have two examples. If, the, if um, a statement is positive, the question tag would be negative, just like here, like I wrote it here. So, you called me, and then we know that is a past sentence, so a past simple, and we know the auxiliary of the past simple is did, so we say, didn't you? You called me, didn't you? So, this is one person that says that, right? So, you called me didn't you? So I confirm that that person called me. And if it's positive, the sentence, as I told you, the question tag would be negative. And another example, Peter doesn't speak Italian, does he? So Peter doesn't speak Italian, does he? So doesn't, okay, doesn't is negative. And so because it's negative, the question tag must be positive. And in this case, the auxiliary verb is does. So it's uh, present simple. Now, the last question, okay? I'm really tired after all these questions. So let's take a look at the last question. How can we use auxiliaries to avoid repetition? Instead of repeating the whole sentence, you can use the same auxiliary of the sentence in question to avoid repetition. Just like my two examples. Mary and I didn't like the movie that much, but John did. So, let's take a look at the auxiliary. Mary and I didn't, didn't like the, mo that, the movie or that movie that much, but John did, did, to avoid repetition, did like the movie. So, John liked the movie, we could say, but in order to avoid repetition, we just repeat the same auxiliary of the original sentence. So, did. See? Didn't. Did. Right? Mary and I didn't like the, the movie that much, but John did. Now, another example. Sue prefers eating late in the evening, though I don't. So, you can see that this is the present simple and it's the third person singular, so prefers eating late in the evening, though I don't. So, the same auxiliary of the present simple in this case is the first person singular and it would be do, right? The auxiliary. So, I don't, I do not, I do not prefer eating late. So, to avoid repeating prefer eating late in the evening, we just use the auxiliary of the same, the original uh, sentence. So, I don't. So, prefers eat, eating late in the evening, though I don't. Well, I'm exhausted today. So, thank you very much for watching. If you want to share the lesson, um, you may do so. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. You will get a lesson the following week, okay? So, it will be next week for me. For you, it will be the following week. Have a great day. I hope to see you next week with a new lesson. If you have any comments or requests, just post them under this video. Great. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.